Okay, I'll call this meeting to order for May the 19th, 2020. Result of the agenda for the May 19th, 2020 regular meeting of council be adopted as presented. <coughs> Moved by Councillor uh, Friesland, second by Councillor Gray. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolved that the minutes of the May 5th, 2020 regular council meeting, May 5th, 2020 public hearings, and May 12th, 2020 committee of the whole meeting be received and approved. Moved by Mover, Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? Uh, well there were on the, on the committee of the whole there were some notes and, and I don't know um, how they need to be reflected. Um, but the Swan Valley Recreation District was re accurately reflected that we were gonna change or we were gonna move the motion tonight. The one thing that was in our resolution was that the details of how we were, that perhaps should be reflected in our report, was that the details of how we wanted that money administered were going to be worked out between the municipalities at a later date. And that's not reflected and wasn't commented on in the report to us. Um, the second was that my recollection was that we had agreed that we were going to move forward with, um, with at some point in council, um, moving to remove fences and other structures from public properties. That we were either going to sell the property or um, remove it, but we weren't going to have ongoing public properties. That's my recollection. And I could be wrong, but that was my recollection. Um, the which policy was that? The policy there in the minutes. Charles, please help me. There is a, a policy that begins with a G, but I can't read my own right, damn writing. Um, we passed some policy in that minutes. Just hang on, I can find it. I apologize, Your Worship. I, well, my writing fine. gets worse, worse every day. I apologize. Let me find it. The grants policy. Oh, the grant oh, policy. policy that we we deferred that because we we talked about um, two different um, processes, and, and we generally agreed with the with the notion on uh, of that policy the way it was written with respect to larger grants in particular, um, but with respect to smaller grants, we wanted to adjust that, and that should perhaps be reflected. And. Um, and you'll recall that I gave notice, and I think I have to do it at this meeting. Um, so as business arising from, because uh, I've given notice of my intention to move a very, uh, uh, an amendment to the bylaw with respect to each of the special services. So I give notice that I'm now withdrawing that because we talked about it, it clearly would be a bad plan. Okay. So I think as business arising out of it, I should either I should give notice, I just don't know the policy or the procedure on that. Uh, I'm sorry, your worship. Uh, I know how to give notice. I just have never had to back down before. <laughs> I'll go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, so we, we have that noted. So we can move forward. Okay. That is noted. Okay. Perfect. And that's it. Those were the only amendments, the only changes, but uh, your worship. And yeah. that was only to the committee of the whole meeting. Right. Thank you for uh, bringing that forward. We have a little bit of a second or that. I can't remember. Uh, Mario. We do. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? No. Opposed? It's carried. Four point one result that the regular meeting be closed to allow for a public hearing. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> On the public hearing, uh, I call the order to hear the variance application number two, 2020, open. <clears throat> the purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the following variance application. Reduce minimum property size from 10,000 square feet to 6,500 square feet. Reduce front yard minimum requirement from 100 feet to 50 feet. Reduce corner setback requirement from 20 feet to 17 feet. Reduce interior corner side yard requirements from 15 feet to 5 feet. Mr. Crow? You 
I'll do it. Sorry, I was actually making the notes. I apologize. That's fine. Yeah, where's the mic? What's that? The requirements of Council 69. Council Delorey. Oh. There we go. All right, so we heard that. Um, to, uh, to request that any person make representation, to hear the hearing state, the name and civic address. I don't see anybody here. So therefore, I will then adjourn the hearing. Result of the regular meeting be closed to allow, oh sorry. <clears throat> 4.3. Result of the public hearing be closed and the regular meeting be reopened. Sorry. Excuse me, can I comment on the variance? Oh, yeah. Request? Yeah, sure. You have to open it back up? No, I have. Go ahead. Okay, uh, does everybody have the chart that uh, Patty made up? Yes. There, is it, is that there. Ron? Is that Ron speaking? Yes, yes he is yeah. here. Okay, because I was going to ask him for a couple of questions when we got to the motion, so. Okay, so if you check the chart over on the right hand side, it's got percentage of the zoning bylaw. But if you put that in perspective, the first item for the side yard, the individual is asking to vary the zoning bylaw by 15%. The second item, they're asking to make a 66% concession. The third item is a 50% concession, and the fourth item is asking to vary the bylaw by 35%. Now, my only comment on that is, is that if you approve this variance request, you'll be setting a major precedent to the zoning bylaw, and you'll be opening a door that you will never be able to close. And that's just the way I interpret what this request is. But these, these are major, major requests to the setback of the zoning bylaws. Okay. These are major percentages. Right. So. Okay, thank you. So again, I'll adjourn the hearing and I'll repeat. <clears throat> result of the public hearing, be, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Result of the public hearing be closed and the regular meeting be reopened, moved by Councillor Lentoni, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion, all in favor? It's carried. Four point four. Result of the variance order two, 2020 for the 125 Sixth Avenue South Lot 10, Lot 10, Block 17, Plan 286 be approved. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councilor Morio, <coughs> discussion. Councilor Delorier. Uh, just record a vote, please. Okay. Councilor Gray, you had some questions? I did, and, and these are through you, your worship, to um, the um, building inspector. Okay. Um, there are three questions. Um, maybe he won't have the third one, he may or may not have. The first, because I'm most concerned with the side and I think it's a side and corner yard um, variances because we've had a number of issues with respect just let me double check a number of issues with respect to um, yeah the corner side yard uh, and the um, side yard corner setback because, because for both of those um, the other one I'm less concerned the other two I'm less concerned with but those are about sight lines we've we've actually been taking a pretty aggressive stance stance with respect to sight lines and things like that so <clears throat> I'd like a report from somebody as to what the effect of this would be and what the effect would be if we allow this on an ongoing basis. So that's the first two pieces of the question. Um, and, and the second, uh, well, third question, but is um, it, 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 Atkinson was defeated on lesser things. And I'd like to know when that was done and um, what, the, like, what the vote was, what the rationale was. If somebody has that. So those two things before I make a decision. 
I'll let maybe the first questions be answered by Mr. Um, or the building inspector, and then Councilor DeLaurier can answer the third part. So you're talking about sight lines on, on the uh, on the corner. Um, I was approached last week by Darren and Derek that they are working on something to do with um, corner properties and having setbacks at a 45 degree angle or some such thing. It wasn't all firmed up, but it was certainly uh, ran by me in, in one regard of what the consideration was going to be, and I don't know where it's at at this point. Uh, at this point, there's, there's no request for a fix. So if there is in the future, yeah, it could be a concern of the corner property. Just because these variances, the the location of what he's asking for, which is a threeplex, is is already pretty tight to the various properties. And then if you put a fence in the equation, it it would compound the issue. I don't know if I've answered that property, but uh, yeah, it would it wouldn't make it any more desirable. That's for sure. Okay. Does that answer your question? It does. I think. I think it. it the current design may not accommodate what we, we've been trying to do as a council. Okay, Councilor DeLore. Is what I'm hearing. I, I guess just a little bit of history. Um, back in 2009, I guess Phil and Dwayne would have been there as well. Our Councilor White and Councilor Friesen, sorry. Um, uh, it was actually quite a quite a controversy at the time with, uh, with respect to the community. Um, but, uh, I, th I believe Matt was asking uh, for very similar things, and uh, it was defeated on a three to four vote, I believe. Or two, no, actually two to five. I think myself and Mayor McKenzie were the only ones voted in favor of it back then. Okay, any further discussion? Council Memorial? Uh Yeah, here you, David. That's fine. I'm on mute, David. There we go. Um, the, the side, or no, pardon me, the interior corner side yard, that's the be with the be the uh, back of the building to the next property line, correct? That is correct. Okay, and then the side area of property size from 10,000 to 65, what area of his map is that referring to? What? I'm sorry, what was that question? The. Uh, the last, the side area, property size that says minimum standard 10,000 square feet, and he's asking to go to 65,000 or 6,500 square feet. Uh, what section on the map is that, or is that referring to? What section on the map? I don't understand what he's asking. I believe that's the footprint of the property. That, that is the footprint of the property. It's the square footage of the property. Where okay. on the lot? I, where on the lot is it situated, I think, is what um, Councilor Mori is getting at, right, David? I uh, know, I was just trying to figure out, so it's, so he's asking, the, the, so the like, what's the side area mean on that Patty's chart? The, the side area property, uh, the side yeah. area property size? Yes. Yes. Yeah, What's that mean? Really, that, that really should that side area should not have been there. It just says the property size, which is the actual size of the property, which is the square footage of the total property. Okay. Yeah, and it, it, the minimum on in the zoning bylaw is ten thousand square feet, and that property is only sixty five hundred square square feet. Okay. And yeah, that side area that that's, that should not have been there. That's a little confusing. You're right. Okay, and so, so back to the interior corner side yard. When he, where the standard says 15 feet and he wants to reduce it to five feet, that would be similar to other residential houses, correct? That's Just five feet from a property side line? That's 100% correct. Uh, houses, a minimum setback of five feet, that is correct. Okay, so what's the rationale for this to be in the bylaw for 15 feet? I have no idea who did the bylaw way back when, and uh, just because this is is more than a duplex, it's a triplex, which is going to be the proposal if those goes forward. But I, I, I don't know who come up with those uh, minimums for the different situations for the different sizes of buildings. I don't know that. Okay. Council, good morning. So 
I guess with all due respect with to Councilor Gray, Gray's concerns about about uh, setbacks and, and being able to see, if this doesn't go through, he can come back tomorrow and build a house here closer than he's proposing to build this. Is what is how I understand it. So it, it shows some arbitrariness with with respect to our uh, zoning bylaw. Okay. Mm-hmm. Anybody? I just, Councilor Gray. Does anybody know what the rationale was? I, I'm just, I, I'm just concerned that we make a decision without knowing why. But uh, I, the point made is well taken. That if it's the same as a house on that particular lot, what's the challenge? I guess I, I'm just trying to. Um, Mr. Poole, you know, I'm concerned about not going against precedent. I'm concerned about, uh, but I'm also concerned, as Council Delorier said, that it doesn't make sense. Uh, that we would have different areas for that particular item. There are other items I could see where we'd have variances, but I don't see the rationale for that. And perhaps what we need to do is go through the zoning bylaw. Okay, I'll let Mr. Lewicki go and then Mr. Poole. Um, I'm just going by memory. My, my memory is telling me that that is a CC zone, which is commercial central. Uh, so you, uh, number one, you cannot put a residence in that zone. It's, it's just it's definitely true. cannot put a residence in the zone, so the applicant cannot reapply next week for to put a house on there with these setbacks. So it is a commercial central zone, which is certainly different regulations, and that's why we have different zones in our community. Mr. Poole. I just wanted to let council know that uh, uh, from what I remember, the resident in 2009 was told that the number of the variances and the size of them were the main reasons why it was denied. And uh, I do remember that that uh, the committee was supposed to get together, take a look at the commercial central zone and see what changes can be made to the zoning bylaw in order to allow for this uh, as part of the bigger picture of uh, as an incentive to, to you know, to, to, to get development in our in our downtown area. Councillor Gray. Uh, one last question, I'm sorry. It, it occurs to me that part of the reason may be because of parking. It, does the current plan, maybe Derek or, or Ron, one of you can tell me, does the current plan accommodate such in parking on site so that there won't be parking on the street? Uh, the proposal that he proposed with his development application will have adequate parking stalls on the east end of the property. That is, yeah, that's correct. Okay, good. I'm ready. Yeah, it shows five parking stalls coming off the back lane on the east side. Correct. Okay. So any further discussion? Councilor Friesen? No? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay, opposed? Okay, so it's carried. Result of the May 14th, thank you, Mr. <coughs> Result of the May 14th letter from Minister of Municipal Relations, Michelle Squires, we received his information. This here is a letter in regards to its new bylaws that they're probably perhaps asking us to pass in order to um, control um, public spaces and, and, and make sure people are holding their, their uh, obligations as far as what the uh, Department of Health is asking and the province is asking for us. Uh, I need a motion to move. Anybody? Councillor Delorier. Seconded by Councilor Friesen. Any discussion on that? None? Okay. I'm sure that we'll have to probably have a discussion about this at our next Cal meeting if we can. We can. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of the Director of Public Works report, we received this information. Moved by Councilor Delorier, second by Councilor Morio. Discussion, questions for Mr. Poole. Councilor Delorier. 
Um, I guess uh, I see your your you continue to do street sweeping. I've had a I've had a few comments made to me, and I know you may be working already at, for on a plan similar to this for snow removal, but um, perhaps we could uh, look at a plan to uh, let people know which which areas of town will be swept, and uh, and we in advance so people can make sure that they don't have cars or trailers parked on the streets. And then, you know, similar concept to the, the issues we have every winter with snow removal. So if, we, if you are looking, and I know that at one time you were looking at such a system for, for snow removal, it, it could be, be leveraged to uh, street sweeping as well. Yeah, we are we are looking at what, what changes can be made to, uh, to get a snow removal schedule, and we can add the, the uh, street sweeping to that as well. Councilor Gray. Two things. Um, the first is with respect to 6th Avenue North, just over the hill, there's a um, huge hole near the manhole. Are you aware of it? Yeah. And are we moving to fix that sometime soon? Because it's quite large. Yeah, it is. It'll 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 get fixed immediately when uh, as we get our frames in. Okay, are we going to do something to, to I, I don't know what we can do, but to make sure that Nobody trips on it or, or whatever. We, we have yeah. to do something. We can put a deleter up now that now that we know about it. Yes. Okay. The the second thing is I raised it last time and I'm going to raise it again, which is on Fifth Avenue between the MPS building and, and Ace Hardware. There's a huge mound. Um, one of our citizens, Bruce Bronson, Bronson fell. Um, he has some you know not inconsequential injuries, including some damages because he broke his glasses. Um, are we accommodating that or are we um, my understanding is that it, because he can't, I told him go to the town office the town office is locked and, and he, so I'm, I'm a little concerned that we that in that circumstance we um, have known about it for some time and and we haven't accommodated that because really we should we should cover that uh, well that would have to go through our insurance so I've informed him of that that if if he does want to make his complaint he has to do so in writing and we forward that off to our insurance agencies we cannot just decide to cover it because we right. don't know when when it will end but uh it, it 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 would have to go through our insurance company we don't we don't know uh or i guess we wouldn't have the capacity to do the investigations and and everything needed for uh i don't know a case I don't, I, don't okay. even wanna, I don't even know how far I can go there, especially I don't wanna, you, <laughs> Counselor. Well, I, <laughs> I, I don't want to belabor it. I, I don't think it's appropriate to actually discuss it in open session, so I'm going to ask to go to the committee of the whole meeting because I'm not convinced we have to go to the insurance company. And, and again, I, I do think that you're absolutely right that in most cases that's where the route we, we should go because it's, it's the most prudent course. So I'm going to ask your worship if that can go, that particular issue can go to the um, next committee of the whole meeting. I'll, unless things happen here, I'm going to be on, I'm going to be in, on in Winnipeg again. But um, I, I do want to talk about that just generally because that's the kind of thing that I think we should try and address um, separately. Yeah. Uh, one point that it's important for council to know is is where he fell. MTS owns a, a manhole, like a junction box. Uh, it's an access uh, uh, access panel, I guess. And the frost has lifted it up, lifting up our sidewalk and our curb. MTS does know about it, but it's going to take uh, a significant amount of work to, I guess, move and adjust that thing. So uh, we, we will have to permanently or at least temporarily mark the sidewalk to get people to avoid it. The problem with that is it takes up a very large chunk of width of the sidewalk. It would make that part of the sidewalk impassable. Yeah, so we're we're trying to get a solution uh, as soon as possible. Okay, we contacted MTS. Uh, we just haven't heard back. So yes, we've contacted okay. them, but nothing in, in return. Okay. Can we, can we contact them again? We can. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Councilor Gray? Uh, is there no provision that where somebody doesn't take steps? Isn't there a provision? And again, I, my recollection of the Municipal Act is hazy. I, I'll concede that point right now. 
but my recollection is that where, where we require somebody to do something as a matter of safety and they choose not to, we can take the steps and bill it to them on their taxes. Is that not the case? I'm pretty sure we would have a pretty easy case in, in this situation, yeah. So, so I w we can give them a, de a deadline to get it done or we can't do it. It's just the issue is I don't know what infrastructure of theirs needs to be moved or how to do that. So it, it might be just difficult. I, yeah. I don't want I, I to make it more difficult than it is. I just know that, you know, um, we have an aging population and one of our, our principles is we're going to have a safe vital community and so having old people or, i'm sorry bruce but having old people fall because we on uh, things we know about is probably not conducive to that and i agree and and you know what it's been like that for some time so i think that we need to put some heat to mts to get that problem fixed i agree anything for you okay all in favor opposed Council reports. Council Friesen. Um, nothing really. Uh, Community Zoom has got together, social distance thing, and uh, check things out at the cemetery. We have about eight people who have adopted the flower beds out there. I've talked to uh, Mike Ramsey, and he, he says there's a couple of uh, students going to be working out there and we'll till them up for us. And other than that, I really have nothing to say. Okay. Tell some more. The only thing I had was a Zoom meeting for the Swan Valley Business Consortium last uh, on the 14th, uh, where we just, uh, a lot of the businesses that, and personnel that were on the meeting talked about the COVID and the challenges and processes of moving forward and opening up and strategies on how to uh, keep businesses afloat and where to go um, for <laughs> assistance or different things like that. So that's all I got. Thank you. Deborah Mayor and Tony. You have to unmute Johnny. There. Um, I had a busy week actually last week. I had two meetings with uh, the business consortium, one uh, that Mr. Morio was at and then a subcommittee meeting of that one. Um, a lot of discussion on the COVID-19 and issues with businesses and how to assist moving forward. So I think we're in, uh, in a good place with that group and aiding our um, citizens and our businesses within the community. Um, along with the Chamber of Commerce and uh, everyone else involved. So kudos to that entire group for everything they do. Um, I had a Zoom meeting with our with the company that RISE selected to hire um, an EDO. So that is off and running. And uh, yeah, we should hopefully have something soon um, that the advertising went out today for it. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Uh, uh, I had a discussion with Mr. Poole today in regards to uh, landfill cleanup around the um, around the landfill. I don't know if anybody has uh, visited the quarter section around it, but it's uh, pretty scary and I understand that's getting cleaned up. So thank you, Mr. Poole, for all your efforts and with the um, RM of Swan Valley West to, to coordinate that and get it cleaned up as well um, brackets for the Main Street project that we were in discussion with. I think Mr. Poole, you're still working on that. Um, hopefully that that can come to uh, for council's approval for or debate, I guess, for where we're going to, where money is gonna come for that. I was looking forward that, to that on the agenda, but it didn't make it. So I trust that you're working on that, Mr. Poole. And finally, we had an airport commission meeting. Um, it's been some time that the airport commission has met. We've met um, and Mr. Poole had some very strict guidelines there to, in terms of getting things done. So Mr. Poole, you're gonna be a busy guy and Mr. Ganita as well, but um, out of the airport commission, it, um, 
it was debated again this year on um, the funding formula for it. Um, again, it was voted on that it uh, that the committee will use the 50-50 split, noting that the town of Swan River didn't didn't um, approve that and didn't pay their bill according to that and followed the guidelines um, as originally set set out. Um, so there will be some debate with that, I'm sure, and some questions coming to me. However, um, we do have one of the um, uh, public members, a uh, who is a counselor on it, and who uh, put a little bit of in perspective for everybody else, and and shared his thoughts and ideas, and and felt that the commission was um, able to make that decision that they did noting that um, the pre the people on the original signing committee for the for the original um, documentation I guess are no longer on on that uh, on council um, having said that though it will be presented at the G4 for a matter of discussion to all of council in terms of the funding formula and then moving on, the commission has um, um, agreed to install uh, uh, metered fuel tanks, a card lock system, I think better describes it, um, to avoid call outs and time being billed to the commission from town of Swan River. So to reduce costs, so that we're on the right track to making some progress in, in with the airport. Other than that, that's uh, all I have this week. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess you, you did mention it that um, this, will, this information will go before all the councils to discuss what the levies and all that might look like because definitely it's not, it shouldn't be done at the level of the, um, of the commission. It should be done and, and agreed upon by all the partners. But I think that you alluded to that. That's correct. Councilor Gray. Mr. Councillor Gray, just unmute. unmute. Uh, there's a certain irony in having to remind me of that, obviously. Um, thank you. Uh, uh, Councillor Delorier raised this um, three or four meetings ago, and I want to endorse what he said. Um, when you have an agreement, it's pretty simple. Follow the agreement. It's not that complicated. And if you want to change the agreement, amend the agreement. Like, but that requires agreement. That's how we do things. And and so um, anyway, in terms of the airport commission, I don't even think that's a close call. The agreement's the agreement. If you want to change it, then we change it. But until then, how, on what base would we be paying something different than what the agreement calls for? That's my view anyway. I agree. Okay, you're up, Mr. Council Gray. Okay, well, um, I want to, Past whoever decided that the next meeting is going to be entirely related to the discussions with respect to um, the G4 and our planning for it and our planning for the general service agreements with everybody. That's a fantastic idea. It's overdue. Um, and why? Was it me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, okay. Okay. Nice. So oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I, well, anyway, whatever. I'm just so happy we're doing that. I I, I saw that and I went. I, I'm so sorry for raising it. Anyway, I saw that and I thought, wow, that's exactly what we need to do. The second thing was I want to give a shout out to Courtney uh, Denson for organizing the uh, payment for for uh, the uh, oh, grads for all the posters for the grads. So I think Courtney Denson deserves um, a real shout out. Um, that was a fantastic idea. I think it's it's amazing. Most of the councillors have already agreed. Um, other than that, I've had a busy week, but nothing to do with council, so. Okay. Thank you very much. That, that's, uh, that was funny, but that's good. Uh, Councillor Delorier. Uh, the only meeting that I had since we last met was the library board meeting. Um, the library should have reopened, was, I don't know, today's Tuesday, I think tomorrow it reopens, um, in a restricted capacity, um, but it, it will be able to go there and, and get books and, and stuff, but there'll be no loitering around, there'll be no sitting and reading your book there. Um, 
and uh, there'll be no uh, computer access or anything like that. Uh, so the library will be back open. Um, other than that, nothing else to report. Okay, thank you. Uh, for myself, uh, I want to bring this forward. We have discussed this, I think, committee of the whole, but um, it's, it's, it's being worked on. Some of the councillors have asked me about the closed circuit television and, and a resolution about that. But anyways, I know that Mr. Kroll is, is working on something that will be presented to council for us to uh, to see very soon. So that is being worked on. Um, recently, I spoke with some residents that have some issues with dogs running large. It seems to be always you know a problem here and there. Uh, I know I spoke with Mr. Kroll about that this morning, and and they are working on some items with wildlife protection and with uh, dog or animal control. So that's coming as well. We'll probably hear something in the next week. I think about some ideas about what that might look like. Um, this morning, uh, we had a Zoom meeting here uh, with the, uh, the clinic expansion team. As you know, that there has been a study that was um, requested uh, to uh, answer some of the questions as far as what an expansion of the clinic might look like, or cost like. So that information was uh, presented to the committee this morning, and I will be forwarding that information for all of you to have a look at. And we'll have a discussion about it at our next cow meeting. Um, I have been in contact with Lynette Saragusa, and everybody knows who, who that name is, or and, when, and how she's related to Shared Health now, especially in the last few months. Um, she was the person I was speaking to about the CT scanner. So we've had some communications, but honestly, right now, that's I believe is probably not their top priority, obviously but we are communicating with each other. I've also reached out to Todd Clark, as I promised, with uh, uh, Justice Department, and um, we were chatting back and forth on some things, but again, a lot of the government things that we were dealing with in the last few months, or probably in, back in March now, um, have been kind of slow to move forward. But anyway, I have reached out to, to Todd Clark, so hopefully he'll, he'll uh, be getting a chance to meet up with us again by Zoom soon. Um, happy to say that, well, I understand anyways, that the fires at Campbellville, Pine uh, Creek, and, and Duck Bay are under control. It's good to hear. I know that there has been some property losses, which we don't like to hear that, but I'm uh, glad to hear that they have um, got things under control there. The weather is nice and it's dry, it's windy, and it's perfect conditions for um, fires. But anyways, uh, it's good to hear that they got that under control and people are returning back to their homes again. And I have reached out to Chief Batson as well, so the community leaders in, the, in, the, in that region. <clears throat> so that's my report. 7.4, the result of the town manager's report for April and May 2020 be received as information moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Wintoni. Sorry, I, Councillor Wintoni, I missed your, your, your blue hand up there every once in a while, so my apologies. Uh, discussion, Councillor Delorier. Um, page seven, item 15, I, uh, his worship already touched on that, but I guess I just wanted to reiterate, I as well am looking forward to hearing what administration's plans are as far as animal control. Um, it's been a, uh, all of a sudden, must be with the warm weather, the dogs must be running loose because I'm getting people asking about it. So, so uh, it's definitely something we need to uh, get on top of. Actually, uh, before this all sort of blew out, out of control with the phone calls, uh, Derek and Patty and I have been working on it. As a matter of fact, a, a new ad went in the paper today. So clearly, we had to have done something in the past yeah. to get it in the paper for today. Um, we we continue to do that, and we're hoping to possibly do some interviews possibly by the first of the week first of this coming week um, we'll group a couple of candidates to see if we can find the, uh, the winner of the grand prize in the dog catcher. <laughs> okay any further discussion council morio you're muted yeah there you go 
can't, can't remember what section it was, but I read it today that uh, we're sending something off to our insurance company. Uh, what's that about? Yeah, what section was that? Um, I'm trying works. to find it. I just can't remember where it was. That sounds like a public works thing. Dealing with the Ag Society about the insurance claim? That's the one, Ag Society to uh, litigate uh, insurance. It's number 25, uh, about page 6. Yeah, that's to do with, uh, I believe, Terry. Um, it was breaking. Oh, breaking. Did, did you hear that? Uh, a break in? Yes. Okay. That's all I got. That was, sorry, that was on Patty's desk actually. Councilor Gray. Yeah, you're uh, muted. It's a good thing because I had something to say about being muted. Anyway. <laughs> uh, you're gone. It, there was a break in. There was a break in at the Ag Society. Well, what does that have to do with our insurance? One of the food booths. So? so, did somebody from the town break in? Because if they did, then yes, of course. But outside of that, how is it anything to do with us? We cover the, I don't know, the property there, right? Sure, yes, there are. There are, there are, most, the, the booths? Most towns cover the uh, fairgrounds or rodeo grounds uh, for the ag societies. But, but the booths are they? Are we offering insurance? To the, I mean, I, I'm it's good for that booth. because I, it's not in the booth. I, I actually deal with it. Oh, I, it was okay. I understood it was one of the food booths, and I was going. I was thinking, how was I to do with that? Okay, got it. Okay, that answered it. Thank you. Yep. For the discussion, all in favor? Yep. Opposed? <laughs> Carry. Eight point one. Result of the Swan Valley District Recreation Commission audited financial statements for the year ending December 31st, 2019 be received. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Wintoni. Discussion? No? Okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Wow. Whereas the Swan Valley District Recreation Commission was formed by the Town of Swan River, Municipality of Swan Valley West, Municipality of Minnetota's Bozeman, and Swan Valley School Division to provide recreation programming for the residents with the member communities. And whereas there has been, organi has been an organizational structure changes as recommended by the SVDRC organization study that had changed the the role of the SVDRC from an or operational function to an advisory function. And whereas the SVDRC had requested funding from the member municipalities to continue to provide recreational programming within the Swan Valley as part of the new advisory role to assist the communities in the delivery of recreation opportunities. And whereas the member municipalities are not in agreement to provide funding for this recreation programming, which places the SVDRC in a position of having no value and continuing to operate. Therefore, be it resolved, the Town of Swan River hereby agrees that the dissolution of the SVDRC by September the 30th, 2020, and that any retained surpluses be dispersed as follows. Top up the Swan Valley District Recreation Host Committee account to $30,000, which will amount to approximately $20,000 from the surplus to be used as a loan program for any large-scale recreational events in the future, to be managed and overseen by the Town of Swan River Recreation Director, and the remainder of the surplus will be provided to the Community Foundation of Swan Valley to use to provide grants for recreation and sports within the Swan Valley. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second of Councillor Delorier, discussion. Councillor Delorier? Um, I'll vote in favor of the resolution. Um, the, the very last clause, though, um, I, if it, if it, I, I could see it being a sticking point with other municipalities. Um, so if, they, if there's other suggestions, I'd be open to hearing the, those from other municipalities. But uh, the, the intent was that all four municipalities or all five members, including the school division, would pass the same resolution. So, in that spirit, I'll 
I'll <laughs> be voting in favor of this one. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 is it me? Yep. Um, and, and, and just for for the record, uh, the we had all we agreed at the council meeting that that although we were agreeing it was going to the the uh, foundation, we also talked about the fact that at the next G five, we were going to talk about what how, what how that would be structured. That is, that it's not going to be just turned over; it's going to actually have a structure. These are the purposes. These are the ways, and these are the parameters. Um, that's that's my understanding. Of what we agreed at the council meeting. Okay. For the discussion, Councillor Quintoni. Yep. Uh, just to, for further um, information, Councillor Gray is uh, absolutely correct that this will be a part of the G, G5, G4, G5. Um, and then a further discussion would be had with the Commission and then a, a, a detailed report as to how that um, would take place would be provided to eat, to would be provided to councils after it was discussed at both both levels. Okay, thank you. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? Councilor Gray, you're opposed? Not. Just slow to vote, I'm oh. in favor, I'm okay. in favor. Okay, it's carried. I figured you'd vote in favor, so. Yeah. The result of the, that a grant be made to the Communities and Blooms Swan River Committee in the amount of $5,000 as included in the 2020 financial plan. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? Councillor Friesen? That's great. Okay. Everybody's working on uh, preparing for. If, if you need to know, We'll uh, do up a financial statement when we're all said and done, and I will present it here so that you know where the money went. Okay, for okay. transparency's sake, I guess if that's what the registration is looking for, then sure. Okay, all in favor? Opposed? That's carried. 8.4. Result of the Swan River Handyman Policy and Procedures Manual be received and approved. Moved by. Deputy Mayor 120, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Delorier. Um, under uh, Handyband Services, one area served, contributing municipalities at Swan River Handyband Service. So does that mean now we will not be leaving Town of Swan River? Because I don't think any other municipality contributes to it, correct? Mr. Poole? Uh, just to answer that, it's not on tonight's uh, agenda, but I, I do have a proposed fee schedule, and it includes for uh, fees for non-contributing uh, municipalities. So there, there's, there'll be a substantial increase in fees for municipalities who don't contribute to the service. And I can get that to cancel, but by email uh, or even get it on the next agenda so you can see on all net uh, by tomorrow. Okay. okay, I guess that's that's good. I'm not opposed to that, but it would still be in contravention of, of the policy of only going to contributing municipalities. So I, it's so like, you know, it's a minor issue, but we may as well make it right. Oh, I agree. We can, we can make that change. Uh, to vote on the, on the resolution then. Councillor Gray. We can't hear you. I got it. I got it. I'm, I'm going to stop muting myself. Um, <laughs> Councillor Friesen, thank you for laughing. <laughs> and anyway, no, my issue is, well, there's a couple of things. Firstly, uh, and I know we've had trouble recruiting some somebody else to do it, but I, I this is one of those services that I fundamentally believe we should we have to find somebody else to do it because the after hours piece is as important um, after hours and weekends. And I went two years or a year on council without even knowing that three years ago we changed that, and now we have it sort of backed away from. And I understand why because we can't even find people to do it right now. But and right now it's not a big deal because most people who are shut ins can't get out anyway. Uh, because of COVID, but as soon as it comes out, that's going to be a problem. And so I have a problem with that part of that policy. 
Um, and you know, I don't know whether we want to debate it now or whether we want to debate it at a cow meeting. I I I prefer to meet things at cow meetings, but I'll I'll defer to the will of the majority. So, which particular part did you have issue with? The issue with 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 um, when we did. Let me find the section. I apologize. I had it here, and then I closed it for some reason. That's a mystery. The hours of service. I, I, the hours of service piece. Uh, um, it, and I'll, I'll find exactly what it said. That it was it was about after hours service which I think is a fundamental piece. I, I have to tell you, I think that the idea, the rest of the policy, the idea of, of specific programs or specific policies when there's an accident, when there's a fall, when how to report things, financial accountability, I think overall that's a fantastic policy. I, I just, that's, that policy would be a change for our existing policy and I don't agree with it. So are you proposing that the hours of service or if you want to, uh table this? Well, I, I don't care which we do. Like, I, I can propose an amendment, we can debate it and all, or we can uh, we can spend more time at a, at a cow meeting, which I think is the appropriate process, to debate the wording and get something where everybody's on board with it. Um, because I don't think it's, I don't think anybody disagrees. And I think self-evidently, we're not going to offer service just around the clock any time. I think that was never the intention. It was never what was in incorporated, but it seems far more restrictive here. And I understand we've had problems recruiting, and I understand there are all kinds of other union issues, um, but I think um, we should talk about it. That's all. And I don't care if you want me to make the debate now, but um, I, I just haven't, I, because I've been busy, I haven't had a chance to think about the way I would word that. But I I can come up with something pretty quickly if we need to. Deputy Mayor Lentoni. <laughs> On uh, number five, the hours of service, what does it mean subject to coordinator authorization? Tra it says transportation services during evening, weekends, and statutory holidays may be provided subject to coordinator authorization. What does the coordinator authorization part mean? That, that was basically the, the previous handy van driver help build this policy and we, we put that in there uh basically because there was there was one person do, doing this and if, if he had vacation he obviously wasn't going to be driving the handy van and at that time it was acceptable to say the service is not available at this time so that's how we worded it for when he was on vacation he was unavailable and it's done if council is telling administration that we are Again, we'll have to know this, so tabling this isn't actually a bad idea so we can get it on a, a CAL meeting to discuss uh, if, if we're expected to provide a 24-7 service, we're going to know that and it will affect the job that we're posting right now. Yeah, I, I don't think it should be 24-7. I don't think that's it at all. Well, uh, uh, seven day a week, seven day a week, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. kind of deal. So, yeah. so we have a motion on the floor to vote. If somebody wants to make a motion to table, then that will be probably the most appropriate thing to do. Councilor Montoni. I'll, I'll move to table this to the next cow meeting. And I'll second that. Perhaps not the next one, the one after the next one. Okay, two down. All right, all in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 8.5. Result of the Town of Swan River Fire Department purchased the 2020 Ford Super Duty from former owners for the sum of $43,943.75 and the incident command system add ons from Seahawk for $32,240 for a total of $76,183 plus applicable taxes. Moved by Councillor. Lintoni, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion. Councillor Delorier. Um, so, in the uh, decision paper, there's it details how we got to here. With with the current utility truck, we're saying that a lot. Uh, it's we basically outgrown it because we use it in a uh, a wildland unit capacity, but this new one won't be performing that capacity. So I'm just wondering, we we had increased repairs on the old one. 
do because it was doing a job that it wasn't really meant for. But this new one isn't going to do that job. What will do that job right right now? Chief Fedorcha. The only thing that would do that job right now would be a wildlands truck, and without the cooperation of the different municipalities, we aren't going to get one. Uh, right now, we are using forestry hose and dragging hand lines to the fires we go to. So, if we were to keep the utility truck, there's no, I mean, the reason, the, the, the reason for that we had such high repair costs is because we are going to use it as a wildland truck. We're not going to use any truck as a wildland truck, so we, we wouldn't foresee those same kind of repair costs coming is, I guess, where, where I'm going with this, because we we're obviously telling ourselves that we don't need a wildland truck, because we're not going to have one if we go ahead with this purchase anyways. Chief Orchard. Well, in regards to uh, wildland fires in the town of Swan River, we can handle it with what we have now with the two buffer units. Um, the wildland truck is only utilized out in the RMs, uh, and uh, with what we have now with the capability with the old truck, it's a 60 gallon water tank that's not used every call, it's just light grass. Council Morio. Uh, but we're currently doing wildland fires in the RMs that we start, correct? We're just not, we're not, not going to just stop fighting wildland fires, correct? Not at all. Under the wildfire act, we have an obligation to. So, so like, uh, we'll still be doing that, correct? Yeah, we'll still be doing wildland suppression. It just won't be with the old utility truck. Okay, for uh, Councillor Gray. I have two questions. On the decision tree, it says that two of the bidders didn't meet the requirements. Um, why? Well, one of the requirements we have were uh, tire size to keep the repair costs down or the replacement costs. So they uh, had 20 inch tires instead of the 17 that we wanted on our, on our uh, proposal. Uh, the other, all, other issue was uh, carpet and cloth seats within. Uh, we wanted vinyl for easy cleanup. Okay. And they're the low bidder in any event? Yeah, yeah, our recommendation is the low bidder. Okay. So um, it's unrelated to, the, to this decision, but I agree with Councilor Delorier's concern. Um, we're going, we, we obviously have a requirement to go to grassland fires where we're covering it. Um, but, um, and perhaps this is what we need, one of the things we need to discuss next meeting because if we're providing that service, don't we need the capacity to do it? And aren't you telling us that, that we don't really have the capacity to do it? We do within the town of Swan River, but we don't in the other municipality we serve. Isn't that what you're actually saying, Chief Fedorchuk? No, actually, we have the capacity with the trucks that we use, uh, the, the main bumper trucks that don't go off road. Um, we use forestry hand lines from the trucks to the fire. All this utility truck does is give us the ability when we can do it is to drive into a field and, and attack smaller fires with the pump we have. Uh, it's not the replacement that we had for the old bumper four that had uh, 500 gallons of water and a, and a firefighting pump on it. Okay. The uh, utility truck, when we put this portable tank on it, was a, a stopgap system, if you want to call it that, because we were expecting a replacement of a truck, what, well, second years second years after um, the old one was decommissioned. So we're perfectly capable, like, like we, I, I understood there was a problem because the hoses were challenging and so on. That, that Am I missing something? No, some fires dragging hose is really challenging. Um, if we had a properly equipped wildland truck, it would cut down in some response time because we can drive out to the fires. Um, this vehicle is, the old utility truck is just too light of a vehicle to use as a wildland truck. That's where our repair costs coming from. It's carrying extra water and it's not equipped to carry that weight through that terrain. Okay. okay. All right, further discussion? Okay, I'll call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Abstaining? 
I, I voted for, I meant to abstain. I'm, I'm confused, sorry. I've got to be honest. You voted? I, said, I voted for, but I meant to, when I voted before, I meant to abstain. So I'm abstaining because okay. I'm confused. I don't know exactly what's happening. Okay, I mean, I, I'll ask again, because sometimes we have a delay. So all in favor? Okay, opposed? Abstain? Councilor Wintoni, I didn't see a vote. Mute. I voted in favor, Your Worship. That's carried then. I ran a vote like that before. <laughs> <coughs> All right, moving on. Where are we here? 8.6. Result of the Director of Public Works purchase a 2020 F350 cab chassis from Four Motors in the amount of $36,197.75 and a service debt from Grazier Custom Manufacturing Limited in the amount of $15,450. For a total of fifty-two thousand four hundred and forty-seven and seventy-five cents, moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion, Councilor Delorier. The current uh, truck. How long has it been locked lock, locked out for, and what's wrong with it? Uh, you know, that's one sheet that I didn't have with me. Was the detail of exactly what failed on the safety but it has been locked out since uh, the end of March when the safety was due. And most most of it is uh, uh, metal issues. It's rusted, the frame's rusted, there's there's holes in the floor, there's holes in the deck. They, they can be repaired, but I didn't want to put any money in because I knew that this thing was coming up and uh, I, I won't put any money in if it passes. If it doesn't, we've got a, we've got some repairs to make to our old truck, which will extend its service life. <laughs> so, so the one that it's replacing is a, is a 1990. Is it by 30 years old? You mean it's about that vintage? It is a 1991 ton GMC Dually. Yeah. Okay. Further discussion. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Sorry. It's carried. I'm just not seeing hands going up, so I'm missing something there. 10.1. Result that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General checks, general account checks number 26138. To 26197 for a total of 161,420.65. Payroll accounts check number 4663 to 4669 for a total of 88,529.73. Moved by Councilor Gray, seconded by Councilor Lantoni. Discussion, questions, Councilor Delorier? Um, 26145 Mantua Hydro, $30,000. Dollars. That can't be one month's hydro bill for us, eh? It carries. It carries Mr. Benita? Yes, that is one month of hydro. Oh, I don't call it. Well, okay. Further discussion? Oh, uh, sorry, Councilor Morio. Uh, check number 26196 to Alley Lions Recycling. And it says paper ship to North Star Fiber for recycling. Um, is that a carryover from last year, or what's the story on that? Mr. Poole, there is some explanation in there, but go ahead, Mr. Poole. Yeah, I, talk, I talked to Cliff and, uh, and MMSM, which I, uh, I've discussed with, uh, I don't know, what is it, the officer, I guess, who receives the, the invoice, but uh, it's basically, it's just more recycling. Every municipality is, to, is allowed to have more than one recycling company, uh, do recycling, and so this is basically the the Lions recycling continuing on. They're still collecting batteries. They do paper. Uh, businesses drop off at the ACL, so it's basically the ACL collection paper storage that we're submitting to to MMSM. But this is 
this is the town uh, uh, paying for, for that recycling to happen, but we'll be reimbursed by MMSM. So what didn't happen was the Lions didn't tell me that this was going to be fully functioning in the future, so expect this on our our expenses and revenues uh, moving forward, but this will, will cancel. So you're saying this is like an in and out then? That's correct. Okay, because I was going to say, why are we be paying for it if we have, if they said they were out and wound it up? Yeah, they, they their intention is to carry on with the uh, batteries. I believe the glass they take care of and uh, the paper. But we're we're not a lot of that a lot of that stuff is strictly on them. It's the paper that we're paying to to collect and ship to Winnipeg. Okay, uh, Deputy Mayor and Tony, and then Mr. Gadina. Uh, are the Lions still collecting commercial cardboard by any chance? And is that what we're we're paying for as well? No, no, they're only doing paper collection. And like I say, they're doing some battery collection, but that's completely on their own. We're not involved. This is strictly for paper. Mr. Gideon. How uh, MMSM works is uh, we submit monthly reports of the recycling that was uh, taken and they combine our statistics with all the other municipalities' statistics, and then they come up with uh, an amount. They pay us quarterly, and the amount is set for one year at a time. So I, I can include that uh, Lions uh, tonnage in with the report, but I can't say that it will come back to us dollar for dollar. We we get a, a just a portion of our recycling costs uh, uh, recovered from MMS Emma. Okay. Yeah, I guess the the way that just the way that that officer explained it to me is that that we would be we'd be accepting that tonnage and it would be included towards our rebate. But uh, I, I took it from him that we would we would be getting those expenses fully recovered. I can I can confirm with him again. Councilman Tony. Um, does our our ex our current um, recycling company know that there is a somebody else in our community doing this? And if so, are we in breach of any contract that with them based on this information? Uh, I, I'm not sure if they know, but our contract with them states that uh, they supply carts. Whoever has the carts fills them, they pick them up and uh, moves on. So their, their contract deals with the, the carts and the recycle bins that are out. Uh, we pay a rental fee for them and it's our job to fill them up but uh, they do not have a uh, monopoly on all recycling materials within the town so I don't know. I think that if we're going to talk if there's any discussion about contracts we probably should probably save that for in camera sessions. <coughs> Is there any further discussion? Okay all in favor? It's carried. 11.1, I believe at this time, Councillor Gray is this going to uh, excuse himself. Yes, I'm going to ask for permission to excuse myself, um, Your Worship. Yes. Take care, everybody. Stay safe Thank and you. talk to you soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Okay, 11.1. Resulted bylaw number 11, 2020, being the bylaw the town of Swan River to amend bylaw number 9, 2004, reclassifying lot 3, plan 38762, and lot 7, plan 2382 from OR, open space recreation zone, to I, institutional zone, be read a first time. Discussion. Oh, sorry. Moved by Councilor Morio, 
seconded by Deputy Mayor Tony. Discussion. Council Morio. Uh, just a question here. Looking at the map, there's like a little right away passageway to from those lots to Valley Road. Is that part of the lots or is that the public reserve? Mr. Poole? That that is part of the lots that is not a public reserve. Weird how that got designed that way. Maybe maybe one time it was intended to be so, but uh, legally it is not. Okay, so that walkway or whatever would be would be uh, part of the owner's responsibility then to keep clear and all that stuff. That's correct. There's several caveats going through. I believe there's third party utilities under there. Okay. Uh, Councillor Wintoni. What is what is the uh, size of or, or in feet, but that uh, space in between um, the one that juts out a hit thing to Valley Road there. What? How big of a piece are we talking about? I would have to get back to you on that. I'm not sure how what the dimensions are. I mean, ballpark more than more than forty or more than twenty feet. No, the the road allowances that you see Hill Avenue is sixty six feet. So that's probably six or seven. Okay. Perfect. That's all I needed to know. Thank you. Okay. For the discussion, Councilor Delorier. Um, not about this, but not about particularly this. When we pass bylaws amending our zoning bylaw, do those get collated together so that if somebody wants to see the zoning bylaw and all its amendments in its entirety? Like when I go on our website, I just see the 2004 zoning bylaw. I don't see like we make you know half a dozen amendments a year. All those amendments, how do how do we they should have those with that? Eh? You they know what should I'm be saying? they should be put together in paper. Uh, usually not online. I mean, if okay. we had a much more modern system, we could do that. But we definitely should have it on on paper so that we can open it up and and go through the list of amendments and possibly scan it in, you know, uh, below. I think the uh, zoning bylaw is something that we should be looking at uh, reviewing uh, in light of, of tonight's proceedings and uh, where towns have been uh, changing over the past 10 or 15 years. We may be starting to fall behind the times and how towns are continuing to be developed, um, which may need to be looked at. Mr. Poole. Uh, basically, you reiterate what Charles said. It's very typical when you look at other towns' uh, zoning bylaws. Right before the table of contents is a, it's just a one-page list of all the amendments since the bylaw came into came into play. So yes, we we can be looking at that as time for. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? That gets carried. Result, resolve that pursuit with sections 152. Your worship, your worship, sorry to interrupt. 10.2 was uh, admit, was missed. Oh, I did miss that. Thank you. I apologize to Councillor Gray. Result of the financial statements for the four year, four months ending April 30th, 2020, be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, seconded by. Councillor Friesen, discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolve that pursuant to sections 152 3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Um, we have an item about the um, primary health clinic. Uh, moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councilman Tony, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried.